through your very first three picks in this mock draft. Sure, Field, starting with number one, Jacksonville. We're going to go with Aiden Hutchinson, the great defensive end, University of Michigan. And the reason we're taking him is he is a force multiplier. He will make the whole program better. He's going to elevate everyone's play. They did a couple things on the offensive side of the ball, Cam Robinson, Brandon Scherf. But not only is he productive, his motor is relentless and contagious. He will make that front seven of Jacksonville better. Number two, Detroit. We're going, to, we're going to take Sauce Gardner, University of Cincinnati, Ooh, corner. Saucy. We need corners, corners, corners field. We got to play man to man. Sauce Gardner is Antonio Cromartie. He is long, he can Ooh. run. He did not give up a touchdown pass this past season. And for Aaron Glenn, the Detroit Lion defensive coordinator, pair him with Jeff Akuda if he's healthy. You may have two frontline corners. So I'm going corner number two and then number three. For the Houston Texans, I'm taking Kyle Hamilton, Ooh. the free safety from Notre Dame. And what I love about him is his versatility. Hamilton played over 300 snaps at free safety, slot corner, in the box. And for Houston to eventually get to where they want to go, you got to be able to play man-to-man -man on the tight end. That's something he can do. And I think he plays a lot faster than his time speed at 4.59. So I'm taking his versatility and the fact that he could play man-to-man mm. -man and then in the deep part of the field. All right, Mike, so this is not considered a strong draft class for quarterbacks, but you have Kenny Pickett going early. Where do you have him landing? Yeah, number six to Carolina. If I am Matt Rule, I have to save my job. This is a guy that started 48 games. He's 24 years old. He is somebody that can make all the throws. I think he has a really high floor. Maybe not the biggest ceiling in the world, but I think he's slightly better than Kirk Cousins. And when you compare him to Sam Darnold and Darnold's proclivities to turn the ball over, 81 turnovers in the NFL, Kenny Pickett gives me a better chance to win this year as the starter for the Panthers. And that's why I'm taking Kenny Pickett at six, and I'm starting him from day one. All right, so from the Pitt Panthers to the Carolina Panthers. Dan, is this the right pick for Carolina? I don't think so, and okay. I think it's an example of need versus want. Okay. The, the, the Carolina Panthers are in need for the quarterback position. Mike T., I would say that I think you already have a guy like Kenny Pickett on your roster, and that is Sam Darnold. Really? And I don't think that you take a quarterback at number six in the draft when you can sit here and say the only difference with him and the guy you already have is turnovers. I understand that turnovers are a massive deal, but if I talked and, and described Sam Darnold, the player, you would say tremendously talented, poor mechanically. Sometimes those poor mechanics allow you to make some really good plays. And a lot of times those poor mechanics lead to bad plays. And if I described Kenny Pickett, the player, I would tell you not tremendously talented, poor mechanically. Sometimes those poor mechanics lead to some cool plays. And Ooh. sometimes those poor mechanics lead to poor plays. And I think that would be my hesitation if I was Carolina going – I really don't see the physical talent upgrade from Kenny Pickett to Sam Darnold. Or Sam Darnold, Kenny Pickett. So, a couple of thoughts. First of all, we know how consequential turnovers are. Oftentimes, teams lose games before you ever have to win it. What I like about Pickett's game in particular, though, he's a 48-game starter. Yeah. He can make all the throws. I think his pocket mobility is somewhat underrated. And he was coached by Mark Whipple. And I see all the pro throws you have to make. He can drive the ball down the field. I'm a little, I don't care about the hand size. I care about the fumbles. He lost 10 of them. I do think we could clean that up with good coaching, Dan. So I don't think there's a massive difference in the talent between the two. But nothing about Sam Darnold's career shows me that he's actually gotten better at cleaning That's up fair. the turnovers, however. Yeah, I, I look at this. Dan, you hit the nail on the head. It's about need and not want. Because mm -hmm. ultimately, like these quarterbacks we're talking about, none of them, obviously, we feel like are for sure things. All of them are going to need time to either develop or they'll be guys that we see eventually try to be starters in the NFL. Yeah, they have some traits and some characteristics. Them traits and them characteristics get your butt fired. No doubt. Okay? <laughs> when we talking about When we talking about the six pick in the draft, the one thing I, I'm with Mike T on is just experience. That's it. If you're looking for a guy, and I think that's what you're getting at, Dan. You just 
you don't want to go to a management guy with the sixth pick in the draft. But, but I think that's where we are if you're not going to focus on one of these elite defenders, if you're not going to go in another direction. And another little fly in the ointment, you may, you may get the medical on Jimmy Garoppolo, and that is a significant upgrade. So it's a lot of things that's playing into this situation. But with Kenny Pickett, I think it's about what you said, Dio. Need, not want. And I'm not sure if the Carolina Panthers feel enough investment now in Sam Darnold after everything they've been through not to pull the trigger on something that may be similar but less turnover. But here's my thing, dude. You are not going to save your job in the NFL by getting a quarterback that just operates. Mm. That's not going to happen. Like, I'm with you. I would t- go, go back four years ago to the NFL draft when the New York Giants took <clears throat> Daniel Jones. Daniel Jones is a good player. He's not worthy of the sixth pick because he doesn't have anything in his game that is uncoachable. Nor does Kenny Pickett. And I think Kenny Pickett's a good player. He's intriguing. But he doesn't have anything Mm -hmm. at the sixth draft slot for me to go, I can't coach that into you. Like, Mike T., I would say, shoot, go draft Malik Willis then. Because Malik Willis has stuff that I just can't coach him. Or trade back and Mm. take Desmond Ritter. Because I think Desmond Ritter in the second round would operate better than a Kenny Pickett will at the sixth pick. That's like I don't I just don't and see And you can that. get an elite defender at 6. Yeah. You can you get can. an elite defender hey. at 6 for them. Hey, cut, cut. No, no you can't. All right, Mike T, last word. Mark Sanchez won. We took him at 5. We won four playoff games with Bruh. him. We ran the ball, had really good defense. Those are things the Carolina Panthers. You guys had well. Nick Mangold and DeBrickershaw Ferguson. Wow. All right. We got Come a lot on. to get to. We got to move forward Mike here. Team, this is... Tom Brady in that conference again. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hey, Come on. Right. You guys had a, a, the best offensive line in football. Sure, if Carolina did that, great. You know, Carolina. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.